What's up, Coder Byte? Welcome back to another Data Structures and Algorithms video. I'm Elizabeth, and today we are starting a brand new pattern. Who's excited? I am. Um, tired of merge intervals, anybody? No, just kidding. Um, okay, so we are going into a brand new pattern. This is going to be called cyclic sort, which I think a lot of people kind of will have a feel for intuitively. And then when we define it and kind of show you the scaffolding of all of these sorts of problems, you might feel more confused at first and then less confused because I think it's pretty intuitive. Um, but yeah, that's my little intro for this pattern. Let's get into this week's problem. Okay, so cyclic sort, what is it? And when is it appropriate to be used? This pattern is best used for problems involving arrays containing numbers in a given range. So that's an important piece here. We're looking for arrays, not just with any elements, not just with any numbers, but numbers from let's say one to N, right? All the numbers from one to N, something like that. Often this pattern is useful for determining what orders the numbers should be in, missing numbers, duplicate numbers, etc. But again, remember, this is for arrays containing numbers within a range. So if there's a range of numbers from one through N and there are some duplicates, find the duplicates, that sort of problem. So what is this pattern really useful for and um, kind of why do, why do we use it? Because using this pattern, we can do all of the above with a maximum time complexity of a big O of N, which is a linear, um, you know, uh, time complexity. And so that means we're never looping through the array uh, for every time we loop through the array, that sort of thing. So this week's problem is going to be very introductory for this cyclic sort sort of pattern. Um, it's going to be pretty basic and straightforward. Let's get into it. Given an array of scrambled numbers from one to N, write a function to sort the numbers in place in O of N time without using any extra space. Okay, so for this problem, it's calling out specifically that we cannot create a new array or any other sort of assisting data structure, right? We have to use um, the array that we're given and sort the numbers in place. So that's an important piece. And the other thing is we have to do it with a big O of n time. So that means we can only go through through the array really one time or a multiple of one time. So we could theoretically go through the array, uh, you know, each element in the array, we could do that two times or three times. As long as it's a constant amount of times, then we can drop that constant and it still stays linear. What we can't do is look at an element and then look at all the other elements per each element or something of the sort that would indicate like a nested loop or something like that. What's our approach? What's our cyclic sort approach? So because we know we have all of the numbers in the range of one to n, we can loop through the array swapping numbers with the number in its appropriate index in the array until we sort the entire array. So what do I mean? Let's look at an example here. So this is the example from the previous slide. And here I just put in all of the indices of this array up top here. So this is the zero with in index, the first index, et cetera. So you can see we have the numbers from one to five, but we have the indices from zero to four. So that's just keep that in mind that to go between these indices and these numbers, we will have to either add or subtract one. So how can we do this without making a new data structure and in just a big O of n time? So we look at that first uh, element in the array, right? And it's at the zeroth index. Now we know it's not in the correct spot because the three should be at the third index or the second index, right? Again, we have to subtract one to account for the zero based index versus our range, which, which is one through n. So three is supposed to be in the where the five is, right? So, and we know that just by looking at three. So what do we do? So in order to just maintain this array, we can actually swap these elements and put three in its correct place and then deal with five. So let's watch that happen. So five is in three's spot, which we know by looking at three. So we can just swap those, right? And now three is sorted and we can deal with five. So now let's do the same thing for five. So what's in five spot? So five, the correct index will be four. So the number in its spot is two. And again, we swap. And we do the same thing for each of these. So two and one now swap. And then finally, the array is sorted. Wonderful. So that's kind of the um, 
algorithm. It's very simple and straightforward. Wait till you see the code. It's even more beautiful and straightforward. But again, we're going to raise the stakes each week and we're going to use this pattern and apply it to harder problems. But this is the bare bones of this algorithm. And it's important that you understand kind of the basics of this algorithm. Okay, so I'm in Visual Studio Code. I have a totally blank file here. Let's get started. So first, of course, I'm going to define my function. Let's just call it cyclic sort because this is really cyclic sort in its most basic form. Um, and we're going to, we know we're going to take an array and let's put in our test cases here. So here we have console log cyclic sort and I am just going to copy and paste this from the slides. So here we have that same example from the slides. And of course, we all know what to expect. It will be this array, but sorted. And let's do this again with a, another test case. So here we have another uh, range. This is a range from one to six. And of course we expect the sorted one to, one to six. And then finally we have another one. It is a different cyclic sort from one to six, but it's differently arranged. And here we have what we expect. Okay, so again, what we're expecting is these arrays, but just sorted. So let's get started here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to loop through the array, right? So the best way to do that, I think, is going to be to keep track of the index we're trying to sort. So in this case, it will be, you know, zero to start. And we're really only ever going to increase this index that we're looking to sort uh, if whatever's at that index is sorted. So we're going to leave the, you know, I or R, what we're trying to sort at zero until one is in the zeroth spot, right? Because we're just going to keep putting things in their right place. And then we're going to keep getting things that are in the wrong place until this one is in this place. Then we can move forward and start to do the same thing. Oh, that's going to rearrange. No, it didn't. Thank God. Um, so then we're going to move that, increment that I, and we're going to start to sort from this spot. So to, you know, just whatever. And then we can go to the end of the array. So we don't really want a, just a vanilla um, for loop, right? Because we need to kind of have that logic of don't increment unless we're already, whatever's at that index is already sorted. So I'm going to start that. I'm going to initialize an I variable. I'm going to initialize it at zero. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a wall loop because we basically want to do this until I is at the end of the array. So while I is less than that array uh, length, you know, we're going to do these operations. And then, of course, I'm just going to put in now because we know that we're going to return the array. And it's notice the same array that we're getting passed in because we're doing this in place. So what do we put in this wall loop? So Essentially, what we want to do is we want to deal with kind of what we want to sort. So that's going to be what's in the I spot, right? So const to sort, let's say, and that's going to be whatever's at R of I. So at, to start, it's going to be just at whatever's at the zeroth index. So that's going to be three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to want to kind of figure out where is this going? So where it's going, right? So const the new spot is going to be whatever is at that index so it's going to be whatever two sort is minus one to account for again that zero base index indexing so when we look at three we know that it actually needs to be in the two spot right which is what where five is so that's how we get the two sort minus one it's whatever is at that place minus one will be the index where it belongs to go and then what do we do so Essentially, if it's not in the right place, we want to swap them, right? So how can we check that it's not in the right place? So we can just have an if statement here, and we can say if to sort is not equal to whatever the array is at the new spot, right? So basically, if to sort, which is three, is not equal to, right? whatever is at the new spot that it's going to, which is five, um, because if we were, right, if three was in the right spot, it would be at, 
it would be where it's supposed to be and that would be equal right so its new spot which is its index minus one would be exactly where it is so let's i'm going to move three just for a second so we can see that how that would check how that check would fail uh so three here is in right so two sort will be three and the new spot is wherever whatever two sort is minus one so that's two and two sort in this if statement will be three and it's equal to three so that's how we would kind of bypass this if that that we know that it's already sorted so let's write that in a comment so this is check that they are not already sorted and let's put the five back and let's put the three back so if it's not sorted, what do we want to do? We want to swap them, right? So how can we do that? So let's define a new function, swap with a new uh, variable, swap with, and that's just going to be the array at the new spot, right? So in this case, it's going to be five. And what we want to do is we just want to set the array at the new spot yeah, new spot, there we go, equal to what we're trying to sort. And the array at i will be what we just, the, the thing we took the spot of. So that will be that swap with. And then they're swapped and we leave i where it is because we're assuming that what we just swapped with, in this case five, will still be in the wrong place once we swap it. And we can just do it again until we're the i, right? is equal to it's where it's supposed to be and then right so what do we want to do if it's already in where it's supposed to be we want to increment i we'll look at the next spot right so this is where we're going to increment i so let's write that in a comment here to make it really clear increment i until you find unsorted numbers right so we want to get into this block until we get to another index with no unsorted numbers. And basically, I will increment until we're at the end of the array, when we'll assume that everything has been sorted, and then we'll return the array. And that's the whole algorithm. So let's make sure that that works. Let's look at our test cases here. And we get all three sorted arrays. So again, this is really, really simple, everybody. Um, so I think the important thing here is to kind of diagram it out. So you really understand like, what are we doing here? Why are we not incrementing I? Um, and when are we incrementing I? I think those are the gotchas of this algorithm and do it just like we did in the slide with an arrow and the swapping. And again, this is relatively simple. So, you know, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed. Well, that's all we got for today, everybody. Um, this was a super quick video, so it's nice. I hope you can watch it, you know, in your spare time at work or, you know, on someone else's dollar. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but really conveniently and easily. I love when videos are kind of short and nugget like. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, join us next week. We'll be applying this pattern a few more times for a few more videos. Each week, we're going to do a harder problem. And yeah, now you have all the tools to solve all of them. So get excited. I hope everyone's having good weeks. See you next time. Bye.